So today we are very fortunate that we are having His Grace Ram Gadari Prabhu to enlighten us on Sri Chaitanya Chaitanya. So Prabhu, are you are present on the call. Hare Krishna, yes. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, please accept my humble obeisances, all grace to Srila Prabhupada and Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much Prabhuji for your valuable time and association to all of us. So now I would like to hand over the call to you Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. <coughs> Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Jaya Jaya Shri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Jaya Shri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Today we are reading from Shri, Mat- Shri Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhililila Chapter 22 Text Number 75 and 76. Sarva Maha Gunagana Vaishnava Sarive Krishna Bhakti Krishna Raguna Sakali Sanchare. A Vaishnava is one who has developed all good transcendental qualities. All the good qualities of Krishna gradually develop in Krishna's devotee. Text number 76. Yasyasti Bhaktir Bhagavati Yakinjana Sarvai Gunai Satra Samasate Suraha Harava Bhakta Shakutu Mahatguna Mano Ratena Sati Davatu Bahi. Translation In one who has unflinching devotional faith in Krishna, all the good, good qualities of Krishna and the demigods are constantly manifest. However, he who has no devotion to the Supreme Personality of Godhead has no good qualification because he is engaged by mental concoction in material existence, which is the external feature of the Lord. Purport <coughs> This was spoken by Prahlad Maharaj and his followers who are offering prayers to Narsingh Deva. Srimad Bhagavatam 5.18.12 I will read the purport for that from Srimad Bhagavatam. As explained in the next verse, Krishna is the original source of all living entities. This is confirmed in Bhagavad Gita 15.7, wherein Krishna says, Mamai Vamso Jiva Loke Jiva Bhuta Sanatana Mana Shastani Indriyani Prakritistani Karshati. The living entities in this conditioned world or my eternal fragmental parts due to the conditioned life they are struggling very hard with the six senses which include the mind all living entities are part and parcel of Krishna and therefore when they revive their original conscious Krishna consciousness they possess all good qualities of Krishna in a small quantity when one engages himself in the nine processes of devotional service, Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Padasevanam, Archanam, Andanam, Dasyam, Sakyam, Atma, Nivedanam, one's heart becomes purified and he immediately understands his relationship with Krishna. He then revives his original quality of Krishna consciousness. In the Adi Leela of Chaitanya Charitamrita, Chapter 8, there is a description of some of the qualities of devotees. For example, Sri Pandita Haridas is described as being very well behaved, tolerant, peaceful, magnanimous and grave. In addition, he spoke very sweetly. His endeavors were very pleasing. He was always patient. He respected everyone. He always worked for everyone's benefit. His mind was free of duplicity and he was completely devoid of all malicious activities. These are all original qualities of Krishna and when one becomes a devotee, they automatically become manifest. Sri Krishnadas Kaviraj, the author of Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita says that all good qualities become manifest in the body of a Vaishnava and that 
only by the presence of these good qualities can one distinguish a Vaishnava from a non-Vaishnava. Krishnadas Kaviraj lists the following 26 qualities of a Vaishnava. <coughs> Number one, he is very kind to everyone. Two, he does not make anyone his enemy. He is truthful. He is equal to everyone. No one can find any fault in him. He is magnanimous. He is mild. He is always clean. He is without possessions. He works for everyone's benefit. He is very peaceful. He is always surrendered to Krishna. He has no material desires. He is very meek. He is steady. He controls his senses. He does not eat more than required. He is not influenced by Lord's illusion energy. He offers respect to everyone. He does not desire any respect for himself. He is very grave. He is merciful. He is friendly. He is poetic. He is expert. He is silent. Om Ajnana Timirandasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Shreemate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Hirvisesha Sunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shiva Sari Gauravatta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So Mahaprabhu is now going into the details of the classification of devotees. I guess um, the same or similar sets of instructions were discussed before also in Chaitanya Charitamrita, in Rupa Siksha. Here Mahaprabhu is now describing about three, three classification of devotees, one who is advanced, first class, one who is intermittent, and one who is a neophyte. <laughs> Having said that, he is now going to help us elevate our consciousness and set some guidelines for us to function in Krishna Consciousness. So this verse that we read today, verse number 75 and 76, they are prelude to what Mahaprabhu is going to speak in terms of the qualities of a Vaishnava. Of course, Srila Prabhupada has already listed them in the purport of Srimad Bhagavatam that we just read today, which is the verse Mahaprabhu refers to Sanatana Goswami. But then each of these qualities or some sets of these qualities, Mahaprabhu is going to go over. And hence, the qualities of a Vaishnava is going to be the topic for the next few sessions. We discussed about the importance of being a Vaishnava so far. Now we are going to talk about the qualities of a Vaishnava by which we can understand what is our target, by which we can also understand are we making necessary progress by knowing these qualities? So this verse number 75 and 76 
or something which will form as a introductory to the topic of qualities of Vaishnavas. Here Śrīla Prabhupāda translates that Krishnera guna sakali sanchare. He says all the good qualities of Krishna develop in Krishna's devotee. This particular part of this shloka is the seed of our entire Sampradaya's philosophy. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he formulated Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya or when he tried to adopt and set up a lineage, he had established this principle called Achintya Beda Abeda Tattva, simultaneously one and different. Simultaneously one in all the qualities, different in the quantity. So this particular part of Krishnera Guna Sakali Sanchare is relating to the Siddhanta's principle because some Mayavadis or some people who are not devotees of Krishna can misinterpret this particular line into completely a Mayavada philosophy. Srila Prabhupada is very particular not to inter introduce or not to bring in even a tinge of Mayavada in his commentaries. So he is also guiding us to be careful not to get carried away. So Krishnera Sakali Guna Sanchare happens to Vaishnavas who have taken association of Vaishnava who in turn remembers Krishna's lotus feet. And Śrīla Prabhupāda, being an Acharya, has very carefully introduced the word called gradually. If you see the translation, there is no word that relates to the word gradually in the translation. But Śrīla Prabhupāda is using this word gradually because he is an Acharya, he is trying to open up a very important Siddhānta. So this particular Shloka 75 tells three seeds of our Brahma, Madhva, Gaudiya, Sampradaya. Seed number one is every Jeevatma can inherit or can revive his qualities which are similar or same as Krishna's qualities. Jeevera Swarupa Hoy Krishnera Nitya Das so that Krishna Nitya Das, Krishna's devotee, can develop the qualities of Krishna. This is the first seed of the Siddhanta. The second seed is that these qualities that are spoken of Krishna can only manifest gradually. If anything happens abruptly, dal mein kuch kala hai, which means something is radically wrong. 
So Srila Prabhupada uses this word gradually in many, many places. Especially in Bhagavad Gita, when he is speaking to Arjuna about the process of devotional service. So this is important seed in a sadhaka's journey. Rupa Goswami, Sanatana Goswami, when they are going to give an explanation based on the instruction they have received from Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, Rupa Goswami is giving an elaborate science of what it means to be gradual progress in Krishna consciousness. He is explaining us Vaidhi Sadhana, Raganuga Sadhana, Bhav Bhakti, Prema Bhakti, in Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti, what are all the different uh, stages? Shraddha to Prema, so many classifications. Vishnara Sakratita, Bhagavad classification. Rupa Goswami in Upadesha Amra is giving class. So they are going on classifying. And these classifications are nothing but it's a reflection of gradually develop. And the third seed is about who is a Vaishnava. Mahaprabhu elsewhere gives three explanations to who is a Vaishnava. Number one, one who chants the holy name of the Lord constantly. And number two, he says, looking at whom one can chant the holy name of the Lord. And one, one other place he says, even if somebody chants once, sincerely, the holy name of the Lord, he is also Vaishnava. Now, the seed of the Siddhanta here is, Unlike the materialistic society, here Vaishnava is not classified based on parentage, education, beauty, knowledge, followers, but they are classified purely based on their transcendental qualities. So these three seed forms the entire Siddhanta's what Mahaprabhu has given to us. Achimkya Beda Abeda Tattva is something that we can be equal to Krishna in qualities but not in quantities and the best way to go to Krishna is to associate with Vaishnavas and when we associate with Vaishnavas we gradually progress in our devotional journey. So in our discussion today, we will have three sets of reflections through which we will churn these two verses which will help us to go through the remaining few sets of verses in which Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is going to talk about qualities of Vaishnavas. One thing that is very interesting that is spoken by Mahaprabhu referring to Srimad Bhagavatam verse is that these qualities that Mahaprabhu is going to explain are going to manifest these qualities cannot be or these qualities cannot be learnt or taught. They are going to manifest. It's a very interesting word, manifest. So in our reflections today, the first reflection is about the classification of qualities is talking about good qualities. So we are going to classify or discuss in terms of good from a material context and good from a spiritual context.
good what is considered as good materially is not good spiritually and what is considered as spiritually good not everybody in the materialistic world appreciates to put it to a perspective blessings of this material world is actually a curse to spirituality in her prayers mother kunti is saying tata paramahamsanam muninam amalaatmanam if you read teachings of queen kunti verse number 3 she says my dear lord who actually can worship you who has got the qualities who has got the rights to worship you she says tata parama hamsanam muninam amalaatmanam bhakti yoga vidanartham satam pashyema hi striya she explains that this spiritual knowledge can be not understood by a woman like me only paramahamsa munis and clean souls amala atmanam can understand the subject matter of krishna consciousness and is she is saying the reason for that is those who are completely attached to janma aishwarya sruta sridhi those who are completely attached to high parentage beauty intelligence and all the other vices of this world or who is what is considered as seemingly a blessings for this material world that person cannot come closer to you so in the context of spiritual good versus material good unfortunately what we understand good is purely external quantitative phenomena which is no way going to help us come closer to krishna so when we talk about good qualities these qualities are beyond us in spite of us above us and towards krishna those are materialistic good qualities are about us not above us around us not beyond us and it is completely focused on our benefit so shila prabhupada writes in fourth canto second chapter text number 27 he says this is bhrugu muni's curse just before bhrugu muni is about to give the curse shla prabhupada explains in the purport he says those who are materially opulent whether it is a blessings are curse in the material context they are no good for a spiritual person once a brahmana visited mahaprabhu's house and when he visited mahaprabhu's house after they finished 
that he is a brahmana blessed sri chaitanya mahaprabhu this is i don't know what time of the you know this fact time i think presuming it is after after he came back from puri uh, i mean ish after he met ishwara puri probably so he blessed that may you have all the good fortune generally in our vedic system there is something called as aashirvad mantra dhanyam dhanam pasum bahubutra labham so like that so the mantra says that the person uh, who who is getting the blessings may he be blessed with various things dhanam dhanyam pashum bahubutra labham tata samvatsaram this dhanam is about wealth dhanyam is about prosperity or you know having grains and food pashum is considered as having good animals bahubutra means you know he has got kids and progeny satasam vatsaram dirga mayu means he live for hundreds of years so when mahaprabhu heard the blessing he started crying he said if i had done any mistake if there were any aparad kindly forgive us don't give such a blessings so this brahmana was confused i am giving this ashurad mantra that i give everywhere so what is the problem mahaprabhu explained by getting all these things i will have pride ego envy greed and i will not be able to come closer to krishna hence please bless me with an opportunity to serve the supreme lord so the contrast of this blessings as an ashirvad mahaprabhu writes in his sikshashtaka nadanam na janam na sundarim kavita va jagadisha kamaye mama janmani janmani ishvare bhavata bhakti rahai sukhi tvai so the mood of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu is what is materially good is transcendentally bad and what is transcendentally good may not necessarily be welcome to the materialistic people hence when he talks about all the good qualities to alleviate even an iota of doubt for the readers he is going to explain what are those good qualities all about these good qualities which are all transcendental they are, they are beyond above and towards krishna they are beyond us above us in spite of us and it is directing us towards krishna unlike materialistic good which is directed towards us it is about us and it is around us from self centered thinking this process of krishna consciousness takes us to a selfless thinking from a narrow minded thinking this process of krishna consciousness takes us to a broad minded thinking so in the first reflection is about what is materially good is not necessarily spiritually good so kunti maharani explains janma ishwarya shruta shribi are considered as an obstacle for a person who is not prudent in his krishna consciousness so in our journey of krishna consciousness we need to be very clear about what good we are seeking for and this is not only kunti maharani even bilva mangala thakura is saying same thing he says you are the property of the impoverished mahani kunti says that namo kinchana vittaya nivritta guna vrittaye atma ramaya santaya kaivalya pate namaha my dear lord i offer my obeisances to you you are the property of the materially impoverished you have not 
thing to do with the actions and reactions of the material modes of nature because you are self satisfied and you are the most gentle and are the master of the monist. So our prayers and reflections over here is to make sure that we focus on the right good, not on some other good. I would like to share that as, as practicing devotees, we definitely pass our stage of Kanishta very easily. And passing this stage of Kanishta, he who is a practicing devotee can theoretically accept many, many things. But the challenges start when we get into the practical application of Krishna Consciousness. In the practical application of Krishna Consciousness, when our humility is challenged, when our patience are challenged, when our sacrificing mood is challenged, when our tolerance is challenged, we constantly fail. That is what Mahaprabhu has been explaining in the last few verses to Sanatana Goswami, how a neophyte is still not very strong and clear and firm in his convictions and Krishna consciousness, whereas a person who is a first class devotee, he is philosophically confident, conscious and is applying them in his daily life and also in turn preaching them. So we have practicing devotees. I give a simple example. The example is that we, we normally face as a preachers. We are very eager to get married to a devotee boy or a devotee girl. Which is philosophically correct and practically is also needed. But we see once we marry a devotee boy or a devotee girl, we get into the relationship in such a way that till we are, marriage is happening, there are so much of Krishna conscious thinking and reasoning. But as soon as the marriage is on, as soon as the marriage is over, the rest challenges that nowadays devotees are facing is completely non-spiritual. It may be because of superficial expectation on transcendental qualities, it is because that we have a very superficial understanding of Krishna Consciousness. What we actually meant as our needs were actually not our needs. We were just on the surface of Krishna Consciousness. And this is not only with respect to marriage, it is also with respect to initiation. And it is not only respect with respect to initiation, it is also with respect to Bhakti Shastri, Bhakti Vaibhava studies. It is not, not only with respect to initiation, Bhakti Shastri studies or marriage, it is also about getting a spiritual responsibility and becoming a leader of a community. So somewhere or other, because we are not yet completely clean or pure, our material qualities, which is considered as materially good, get adulterated in our thinking and our practice of Krishna consciousness and we focus on fanning them and firing them, hence to alleviate, to clarify, to you know, give us a very clean understanding Mahaprabhu is going to talk about what are these transcendental qualities and how are they beyond us, how are they above us and how are they towards Krishna. So our spiritual understanding has to begin somewhere and that spiritual understanding actually means that thinking about transcendental good. And one of the basic sutra of transcendental good is Respect. The, if you see all the 26 qualities, this 26 qualities is centered around one single thread called respect. This respect as a quotient is a binding principle to make these 26 qualities survive, thrive and manifest in one's heart. This respect as a quotient, respect towards Supreme Lord, respect towards Supreme Lord's devotees, respect towards Supreme Lord's creation, respect towards Supreme Lord's challenges that are introduced to us. So the respect that we give forms 
the basis of all the transcendental qualities. So these lessons that you are going to learn in terms of qualities of Vaishnava need to be understood with this primary, you know, liner called respect. Shla Prabhupada explains in this in the purport that how these qualities that are important in Krishna consciousness, they proper explains this Bhagavad Gita verse that the living entities in this conditioned world are my eternal fragmental parts. Due to conditioned life, they are struggling very hard with the six senses, which include the mind. So, with the struggle, we have been practicing Krishna consciousness and this material struggle pulls us away from Krishna consciousness and only the qualities that we are going to inherit, the qualities that are going to manifest, the qualities that are going to be imparted or inculcated in us by the blessings of Vaishnava can happen only when there is a quotient called respect. So, the second principle that we are going to talk about is on respect. So, my first reflection I would like to, you know, consolidate by saying what is materially good is not trans not necessarily transcendentally good. And what is transcendentally good cannot be comprehended in the material context. And the transcendental good can only manifest only when there is a quotient of respect. Respect towards the Supreme Lord, respect towards other living entities, respect towards Krishna's creations, and with that respect, he will be able to inherit those qualities. The second reflection, what is this respect all about? Srila Prabhupada explains that unflinching faith in devotional service will help manifest the divine qualities in our heart. Verse number 76. This one who has unflinching devotional faith in Krishna, the, man, the good qualities will manifest in that person's heart. Manifest those good qualities that even the demigods have and even Krishna has. Yasyasti Bhakti Bhagavati Akinchana Sarve Gunev Chatra Samadha You know Samasate Suraha So this word manifest, revealed, imparted These are all very, impo very uh, important words for us to know Srila Prabhupada has used them in quite a few places He says those who are controlling their mind and senses, those who are able to dovetail their consciousness in the service, service of the Supreme Lord, all that pertaining to the progress in Krishna consciousness will be revealed. We know this from Nectar of Inspection to Fail. Here it says that Bhagavati Bhagavati Bhakti Akinjana. Bhagavati Bhakti means devotion to the Supreme Lord. Akinjana I means unalloyed to such a person. This is Samasate Suraha. The transcendental qualities are manifesting. And this inculcation and this revelation, this manifestation needs a very important price to pay for that. The price is called respect and the price of gratitude, the price of humility. We spoke about this three weeks before. This is the mean and this has to be maintained till the end. So, if somebody has to move from Kanishta level 
to Madhyama level, if somebody has to maintain themselves at Madhyama level and definitely anyway to Uttama level, this culture of respect, the culture of gratitude, the culture of humility is needed for these qualities to be delivered to us. Otherwise, we are theoretically Pandita, but practically we are in. There was a Dikvijay Pandit who came to visit Rupa Goswami in Vrindavan. This is a very famous story. So this Dikvijay Pandit, he got a letter from everybody around the world or around the country saying that he is a very great scholar. And finally he came to Vrindavan and in Vrindavan everybody said that if Rupa Goswami agrees that you are a scholar, we will also agree because Rupa Goswami was so famous that they all said that if Rupa Goswami Pad agreed to endorse you as Dikvijay Pandit, we will all immediately accept it. So he straight away came to Rupa Goswami and he narrated the entire episode and Rupa Goswami Pad immediately gave his verdict. He said that is this the only requirement for you to come here? I immediately declared you are the Dig Vijay Pandit. He wrote in a piece of paper and gave it back to him. Without any discussion, debate, argument, question, dialogue. So Rupa Goswami, without thinking anything, he didn't waste even a single moment of time. He said, I declare you, you are Dig Vijay Pandit. And the guy was so happy, jubilant, and he was dancing and going out in the gate. Jiva Goswami stopped it. Jiva Goswami was the cook of Rupa Goswami. So Jiva Goswami said, Jiva Goswami could not tolerate that Rupa Goswami saying somebody else is Dikvijay Pantan, this guy is going to claim that he is better than, above, senior to Rupa Goswami. He couldn't tolerate that. So he stopped him and said that, Hey, who are you? Why are you stopping me? Asked the Dikvijay Pandit. He said, I am the cook of Rupa Goswami. You please answer my questions. So Dikvijay Pandit said that, why do I answer, why do I need to answer your questions? I am already declared as a winner. So let me go and proclaim this to everybody else. Said, all those things are fine, you still answer me. So the Dikvijay Pandit said, okay, if you are just a cook, what's a great deal? He said, I'll answer. And then Jeeva Goswami asked some questions. This guy couldn't answer. He fumbled. He kind of, you know, accepted his defeat. He started shivering and said, okay, sir, I agree that I am not better off than you. Who are you? He said, forget about who am I. You please write and give. I, the Dikvijay Pandit, got defeated by the cook of Rupa Goswami Pad. So he wrote and gave like that and he went. So Jiva Goswami thought he had a great service to glorify his senior. So he went to Rupa Goswami and showed this. Rupa Goswami's response was that he was very angry, very upset and he said that you are unfit to be a cook anymore to me. Because of your polluted consciousness, you are after name, fame and adoration, you are after position, you are after title, you are after all these things, that is not what devotion is, so get lost. 
Rupa Goswami threw Jiva Goswami out of the house and Jiva Goswami went sobbing, crying, weeping, sulking, did not eat. Then Sanatana Goswami had interfered to resolve this case. And the whole drama was to establish a very important point that Krishna consciousness process is not a process to prove a point or to get some title or designation, but it is about consciousness and attitude. Prabhupada writes in the part of Bhagavad Gita, a very interesting point. The whole world appreciates. But Krishna is turning his face away from you. Your spiritual master is turning his face away from you. What is the value of those appreciations? If the whole world is spitting on you, if Krishna is ready to receive you, welcome you, hug you, what is the problem with those spitting? And in the context of Vasudeva Leopard, this is very nicely explained. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was was in his South India Yatra. When he was doing the South India Yatra, he went to a place in South India where there was a devotee by name Vasudev. This Vasudev was suffering with leprosy. The height of leprosy was that his body had pores and Pus was oozing out of the leprosy and there were worms which were eating him. Because of the pus oozing out of the body, sometimes the worms would fall out of the you know pus and sometimes he used to scratch because of the itching. So Vasudev leopard used to think that I am being rude on these souls and used to pick the worms which fallen out of the, you know, path and he used to put, him, put them back. And he used to constantly chant the holy name of the Lord. So, Mahaprabhu went to this Brahmana's, Kurma Brahmana's house and they had a very big feast. And after finishing the feast, Mahaprabhu was going to go further down towards Sri Rangam, South India. And he suddenly thought that I should visit Vasudev. Nobody would dare to go near him because he used to be stinking. Nobody used to close, go close to him because he had this leprosy. But Mahaprabhu, we made sure he went and met him and gave a very nice tight hug to him for his devotional attitude. Krishna Kaviraj Goswami explains, Nashta Kushtam, Rupa Kushtam, Bhakti Dushtam Chakraya. He says, as soon as Mahaprabhu embraced Vasudeva leopard, he says, Nashta Kushtam, the entire leprosy, which is got completely cured in no moment. Rupa Kushtam, Rupa Kushtam means that his bodily luster, he got sort of glowing. And Bhakti Kushtam, the devotional and the transcendental mellow, a transcendental devotion manifest in that person. And Prabhupada explains, or the explanation goes, that this is what happens for a practicing devotee. This is what is explained in this current context. When somebody is ready to do unflinching faith, we will also be purified of our kushta. What is our kushta? What is our contagious disease? What shall Prabhupada explain? As six kinds of or six misery or six uh, what he's writing here in the translation he says struggling with the six senses because of the conditioned life so this struggle is considered as a kushtara a kushtaroga it's a kind of contagious disease we struggle because of our association with those who are struggling and we also spread the struggle to whom with, with whom we associate. So Nashta Kushtam, when somebody comes in contact with Mahaprabhu Sankirtan movement, this 
pain or this leprosy gets killed, Rupa Pushtam, good qualities start to gradually manifest. So, for the rights and teachings of Lord Kapila, the practicing devotees in Krishna consciousness movement, look at their face before coming into Krishna consciousness and look at their face after they are in Krishna consciousness or after they join Krishna consciousness. Since our devotees' face are very bright, they are always happy because they have understood the real truth. Rupa Pushtam. Bhakti Tushtam. To that person, the real bhakti manifests. So the second reflection is that unless we have respect, humility and gratitude, these three won't happen. In a sense, good qualities that are listed won't start to manifest in that person. So the underlying principle or the principle which is part of the 26 which are very important to you know survive this as a thread is about the quotient of respect. <laughs> The third, the most important reflection is that here Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explains Harava Bhaktasya Kuto Mahaguna. What we should not get carried away is about this particular point. A very nice example is given about Kamsa who after the marriage of Vasudev and Devaki Kamsa desired to drop Vasudev and Devaki in his own chariot. Kamsa was a Maharaj was a great emperor and he decided to ride a chariot for his own sister which is very unusual. Instead of a charioteer, he chose to drive himself. It is not something uncommon. for a normal person to do this. But for an emperor, this is definitely uncommon. So everybody appreciated this. Wow, such a great, you know, love that he has for his sister. But that love became hatred just at one instant when he heard the Akashwani. So the important point which is correlating to this good quality topic is what we discussed about material good versus transcendental good. If a person is only materially good but not having devotional sentiments, however, he who has no devotion to the Supreme Personality of Godhead has no good qualifications. Because he is engaged by mental concoction and material existence. Mano rate na sati. Mana rate na means mental concoction. So, on the contrary, all the seemingly good qualities of a person who is not a devotee, how much ever, how much ever great he may be is waste. Ravana for an example. One head of Ravana is so intelligent that he can recite all the Vedic mantras. He is such a beautiful Veena player. He is such a powerful diplomat. Such an able king. 
but he was not devout not a devotee let us talk about the current context there are so many scientists who have got lot of accomplishments shila proper was very specific to bhakti swarup damodar swami shripad maharaj in his life comes from life dialogue if you see he considers preaching to the scientists as one of the most important responsibility because because of their so called achievements people may go after them and because they go after them they may get carried away by their ideologies which are anti spirituality stephen hawking is a well known world famous atheist and there are so many people who are following him still believing his ideologies so shila prabhupada was one of the bold preachers to go and challenge this that harava bhaktasya kuto mahad guna because of mental concoction so in our own devotional journey such a mental concoction introduced going to be a virus introduced in our spiritual journey so the third reflection is we as practicing devotees need to be careful of this mental concoction because the materialistic education that we have got encourages us materialist materialistic association we have got supports that ideology and those who are able mental concocted are considered as a successful person so because of our external success we run after such what things and he said hara avabhat prasakto to mahatuna we will become a simply a mental concocted and no no more existed in krishna consciousness so our third reflection is hence is what is considered as material achievement material good and material accomplishments derived out of mental concoction even though they may be seemingly be good because they have no connection with krishna they are supposed to be simply rejected and hence the combination of these three reflections forms the foundation to understand the qualities of vaishnava's topic so to put this together in a perspective to summarize our conversation today the whole seed of our siddhanta is what the verse number 75 spoke about there are three seeds one is as jivatma can get the qualities of paramatma jivatma can get the qualities of paramatma only when we become a devotee of the lord by being with a devotee and that association of a devotee can gradually elevate our doggish mentality to a mentality of a devotee so achimya beda beda tatva is very clearly established by chaitanya mahaprabhu for this purpose and hence we need to know the spiritual good and transcendental good what is spiritually good need not necessarily be transcendentally good in the sense that sometimes what is spiritually good is considered as a curse for our devotional journey as kunti maharani explains in jenma shuri sutra shuri so we need to focus on the transcendental good and not get carried away by something material and for that we need to understand about the quotient of respect gratitude and humility and we discuss the story of Vasudev Lepper and few other examples. So respect to the Supreme Lord, respect about the process of Krishna consciousness, and respect to all the living entities and the entire creation, 
enables us to be the recipient of the transcendental qualities. When the respect is supported by gratitude and humility, we become a fully prepared student for the patra for the transcendental qualities. Then that that's when these transcendental qualities will manifest. And what we need to be careful about is the mental concoction and so-called successes in the material world. All great scientists, all successful men, all wealthy men are definitely good and glorious only till a limited period in time. And hence we as devotees should know what to yearn for. So better let us yearn for the association of Supreme Lords, we are devotees, through whom we will be able to classify between matter and spirit. We will be able to classify between transcendental good versus material good. Mahaprabhu is going to go over this qualities of a Vaishnava in much more in detail. And as we move along, when we get chance, we will chant further. Shri Shri Chaitanya Charita Amrita Ki Jai Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai Is there any questions or comments we can discuss? Anybody have any questions or comments? Hare Krishna Prabhu Dandavat Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhu Dandavat Thank you so much Prabhu. It was a very nice instructive class. Uh, and the teaching with the example about the Vedas and also uh, the point about gradual. We were describing that in the first half of the class. Very, very nice. Thank you so much Prabhu for your very valuable association and thanks for the very, very good class. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Any other thoughts, questions, comments? Thank you. 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 Sure, right. uh, when we talked about the gradual um, um, uh, progress in the Krishna consciousness, so does that mean that a neophyte devotee, if he's trying, he or she is trying to imbibe uh, many things together, uh, is is um, error on their part, or they should go slow um, in uh, absorbing these things? Um, how do you view it? Basically, a practicing devotee, a gradual devotee, should learn to uh, identify and choose an association from whom he or she should learn. It is like a small child let inside uh, a kitchen or a dining room where so many eatables are kept. Sometimes the child does not know how much to eat. Like how a calf is not supposed to drink too much of milk from the cow. Too less is also difficult, too much is also difficult. So then there is somebody who is monitoring that. So in the devotional practice also, there are many things that are very good, but unless they are presented in a sequence or when they are presented in a proper uh, maturity and understanding, they may overwhelm a practicing devotee and he may suddenly start wobbling. So for a practicing devotee, the first focus or the first encouragement should be given where he or she should learn to be a student under an able teacher. And under the teacher's guidance, he or she should be able to read, practice, implement, apply Krishna consciousness. So whether it is too much or too less, it is something very subjective to a different context based on different things. 
Shla Prabhupada never mentioned Krishna consciousness in a time scale in terms of gradual. Shla Prabhupada always mentioned the gradualty with respect to the consciousness evolution. You could go from Kanishta to Uttama even in one month or three months or five months or half an hour or half a minute. But the point is for this conscious, consciousness transformation, that is, that is some prerequisite at every point in time. If the prerequisites are fulfilled, then, you know, the advancement, the growth of advancement is never mapped to a quantitative time scale. It is purely a qualitative time scale. So from that perspective, a Kanishtas too much or too less is uh, very subjective. And hence, the decision should be taken in consultation with a spiritual authority from whom he or she learns from. More so, it is not, uh, not only about the quantitative uh, judgment, how much of Bhag- how many times you have read Bhagavad Gita, how many times you have visited temple, how many times you have been to Yatra, how many times you have done this. They are all very good things to initially count on, but it says how much of our anarthas or qualities that are bad for our devotional journey have been withered away by this process. So that is what is a checklist that we can we can confidentially and uh, you know personally discuss with our spiritual authority. So as I was telling in the class. Sometimes we get carried away by the superficiality of Krishna consciousness and we start struggling later. So those superficiality to be somewhere or other killed and in the search for spirituality. And the last point that I want to say is that this can happen only when we do not learn to compare ourselves with other devotees. So compare, we under a spiritual authority and focus on qualitative phenomena, not a quantitative phenomena that makes a Kanishta very easily sail through the journey of Krishna consciousness and soon become a Uttama. Make sense? Yes, thank you so much for clarifying that point. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Thank you so much for anybody has any, any questions or we can end the class now. Thank you so much, Prabhu. Thanks to everyone. Enjoy. Okay. We can end the call. One chakra for the room is chakra pass and the day. Okay. 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 Okay.